How did an African tribe come to possess advanced astronomical knowledge about the Sirius star system? Throughout history, many civilizations were fascinated with Sirius, the dog star. You can see this in many Egyptian carvings, the dog man. I think this was to represent Sirius. This bright celestial object occupies an elevated status in various mythologies, but none paint a more intriguing picture than the Dogon tribe of West Africa. The rich culture of the Dogon people spans back more than 5,000 years, and one of their ancient legends tells the story of a race of otherworldly beings called the Nomon. According to legend, these advanced individuals visited the earth eons ago, descending from the sky in a vessel accompanied by fire and thunder. Friendly in nature, they shared some of their wisdom with the ancestors of the Dogon. At this point, we should mention that the Dogon possessed no astronomical instruments with which to study the night sky, but despite this inconvenience, their legends mention that the Nomo came from a planet that orbits one of the two stars in the Sirius star system. It would have been impossible for them to reach this conclusion just by studying the star with their naked eye. In fact, astronomers only discovered Sirius, smaller companion star, a good 250 years after the telescope was invented. Every 50 years the Dogon celebrate the passing of a Sirius cycle a tradition they keep in honour of the Nomon. This is exactly the time it takes for the Sirius B to complete an orbit around its larger, more well-known companion. Is this a coincidence? The fact that a primitive African tribe possessed advanced knowledge about the universe is a mystery, but one that can easily be explained if we viewed their legends as mirrors of real events. So what did the Dogon say about the Nomo? Their home planet orbits Sirius B and is a largely aquatic world. All legends describe them as amphibious creatures. They closely resemble the Nordic alien prototype of the blue-eyed, blonde-haired, tall humanoids. They landed in a large spaceship the Dogon called Pelu Tolo, or Star of the Tenth Moon. This event is one of great importance for the Dogon. The Nomon ship was spiralling towards Earth. A new star appeared in the night sky, possibly a mother ship from Sirius. The tribe described this star as having a swirling cycle of reddish rays around it and also say that it was stationary relative to other stars in the night sky. The Dogon revered the Nomon as civilising gods. They are commonly referred to as the masters of the waters, the watchers, or the saviors. When shown photos of the most encountered alien species, Dogon shamans identified them with the Nordic alien type, claiming that their tribe had met blue-eyed, white humanoid long before meeting white men. As unbelievable as the story sounds, it is paralleled by many others worldwide and they all share one common aspect, advanced alien beings visiting our planet, offering their aid and knowledge to being revered as gods. It would appear that these visitations occurred over 5,000 years ago, possibly following a great flood or another catastrophe. The white-skinned gods apparently visited the entire planet, as legends ranging from Australia to the Americas describe similar beings teaching mankind their ways. The problem is people are getting mixed up with the Sirius aliens and the Pleiadians. These are obviously at, at war with each other. So from what I can gather, the Anunnaki are the Syrians and the Pleiadians are the Hebiru or Hebrew. When it comes to Earth's galactic history, the Syrians play a major part. The Syrians were one of the first alien civilizations to visit our solar system, eons ago. Some as yet unconfirmed theories situate these first visits to Earth approximately 4 to 5 million years ago. They were just short-term visits, mainly for scientific reasons. 
A first permanent settlement, however, was established approximately one million years ago, in what is now Latin America. It was followed much later by waves of colonizations, not only from Sirius, but also from Lyra and later on from Orion and the Pleiades. When these colonizations of Earth took place, the Syrians started playing more and more of a crucial role in the history of our planet. Together with Lyrans and Pleiadians, they ended up creating two successive versions of mankind by blending some of their DNA with that of the less advanced humanoid species that existed at the time on Earth. In the early days of mankind, there were a lot of fights between the Syrians and the Lyrans about Earth. Fights in ancient mythologies between bird people or eagle people and snake people usually refer to the fights between the Lyrans and Pleiadians on the one hand, the bird or eagle people, and the Syrians, the snake people. A lot of people, mainly active as healers, light workers or body workers here on Earth today, feel a strong affinity with Sirius. Many of them have lived on Sirius before. In fact, Many of them even had numerous lifetimes both on Earth and on Sirius, often during Lemurian and Atlantean times, when alien civilizations openly interacted with our ancestors. A lot of the Atlantean knowledge, for example with regard to auras, subtle bodies, or crystal healing, can be traced back to Sirius. It should therefore come as no surprise that Isis, in Egyptian mythology, was seen as the greatest healer who could even restore Osiris life and body after he had been murdered and cut into pieces by Seth. With regard to the inhabitants of Sirius, one should keep in mind that the Syrian system is the home of many galactic species, both physical and non-physical, humanoid and non-humanoid. Most of these races are quite benevolent towards mankind. But it is important to know that there is a minority of negative species, too, in Sirius focusing upon personal gain through imperialism, control and manipulation. Some of the more horrific abductions that sometimes take place have been orchestrated by these negative Syrians, who can mainly be found in the Sirius B system. Physical characteristics of the humanoid Syrians, the Syrian race stems from Vega. They are dark-skinned, have dark pronounced A's. The Syrians that stayed on Earth however, one, had a lot of contact with the Lyrans and too, adapted to the climatological conditions on Earth, so that their skin became lighter, and lighter. Note that the description given of the physical characteristics only applies to the physical, humanoid Syrians. Not to any other races. One of the more persistent rumors in galactic lore is that cetaceans, that is porpoises, dolphins and whales, would originally come from a planet orbiting one of the stars of Sirius. Sirius consists not of one but of three stars, though the scientific community is not entirely convinced of the existence of a third star, as it was only observed once, in 1929. Many people believe that on Earth, two dolphins and whales possess consciousness, similar to human consciousness. Some say another planet that is inhabited by cetaceans orbits South Nightac, one of the three stars that make up the belt of Orion. The Syrians also played an important part in the histories of Lemuria and Tiananmen, Egypt and Sumeria. Alex Collier mentions a benevolent Syrian civilization of Liran, vegan descent that lives in the Sirius system, called the Katae. He also mentions human inhabitants of the Sirius B system that are red, beige, grey or black-skinned, as well as reptilian and aquatic beings. The humans would have cat-like eyes. Are we the only intelligent life in the universe? Within this universe, there are billions of galaxies, each containing millions or billions of star systems. The Milky Way, probably has around 300 billion stars while the Andromeda Galaxy has 1 trillion stars. Most of these stars can have several planets, of which many are able to sustain life forms of some kind. Statistically speaking. It is impossible that we would be the only intelligent life in the universe. And of course we aren't. Even within our local galaxy, the Milky Way, there are various extraterrestrial civilizations. Some are physical, some are non-physical. Some even are humanoid, while others are not. Taking into account that Earth is only 4.5 billion years old, and mankind only appeared 100,000 to 200,000 years ago. 
while the oldest part of this universe is estimated to be approximately 14 billion years old, it is only natural that there would be civilizations that are far more advanced than we are. More than one of these civilizations have been in contact with mankind. Some even played an important part in the history of planet Earth. As mentioned, a lot of the alien races are more evolved than we are, technologically, mentally and spiritually. Most of these races are benevolent towards mankind. Some races, however, do not have the best of intentions. They are often referred to as the negative-oriented extraterrestrial civilizations. Some of them even made sinister deals with Earth humans, and even with governments. In this context, it is, therefore, equally important to know that these negative alien civilizations are only a minority and that their actions are constantly being monitored by organizations that are more positive-oriented. Two of these organizations, are the Ashtar Command and the United Federation of Planets, also known as the Association of Worlds. Not all extraterrestrial civilizations are physical and humanoid. Some species, such as the Arcturians, Els, Andromedans, from the Andromeda Galaxy, or Antarians, are not physical, as we are. Other species aren't considered real humanoid, such as, the Lizzies and or Draconians. The Andromedans, are members of the Federation of Planets. There also is a strong connection with the Pleiadians. When referring to the Federation of Planets some authors actually speak of the Andromedan, Pleiadian Federation. Andromeda was the daughter of Cepheus and Cassiopeia, the legendary, white, king and queen of Ethiopia. Andromeda was kept prisoner, chained to a rock near the sea, waiting to be eaten by Cetus, the great sea monster. She was saved by Perseus. The story is a copy of a Babylonian story in which the hero is called Belmarduk. In astronomy, Lyra is the name of a northern constellation, situated between Cygnus and Hercules. Vega is its alpha star. The constellation of Lyra has long been recognized in Earth's mythology. Some have even connected it with the Pleiades, for example, Ovid, who mentioned that the seven strings of Lyra equaled the number of the Pleiades. This can be considered the birthplace or womb of the humanoid race within Earth's area of the Milky Way. All subspecies such as Syrians, Orions, Earth, Terrans, Pleiadians, Vegans, Zeta Reticuli, Centaurians, Altarians, and many lesser-known groups, are descendants of the Lyran races. Lyra has played an important part in the history of Earth and mankind, as did the Syrians and Pleiadians. When it comes to what, Homo sapiens, physically looks like, the Lyrans, and the Pleiadians, are the main influence, especially for the Caucasian race. The humanoid Lyran races, a, Lyran Caucasians, the original Lyran, Light skin, light hair, light eyes, 5 to 6 feet, metamorphic body. b. Lyran giants, light skin, light hair, light eyes, 6 to 9 feet, metamorphic body. c. Lyran redheads, light skin, red hair, ectomorphic, thin, to metamorphic body, either giant, 6 to 9 feet, or average. d. Darker skinned Lyrans, same as Caucasians but with skin that is light brown, and hair is dark brown. Movies like those of the Star Wars series tap into the galactic collective consciousness. They retrieve ancient memories of the galactic wars that once engulfed large parts of our galaxy, for millions of years. Because the main battles were fought in the constellation of Orion, these wars are also known as the Orion Wars. At the outset, a little over 20 million years ago, the wars started over territory in the constellation of Lyra. But soon the war spread to Orion, and it became a war of mindsets and ideologies. On the one hand there was a group of mainly humanoid races that was committed to the idea of service to others. On the other hand there was a mixed group of humanoids and reptilian races that propagated service to self. These were mainly located in the constellations of Draco and Orion. Initially the philosophy of service to self implied that when everybody takes care of him or herself, then the whole is taken care of, too. But gradually it changed into service to self, if necessary at the expense of others, 
which resulted in victimizers and victims. The victims and their allies, who by now had joined forces in a federation, started looking upon the victimizers as evil, while they started seeing themselves as good. As a result the wars got polarized, and ended up being wars of duality, even though things didn't he start of like that, at all. Now history is filled with examples of how a polarized conflict can never be resolved as long as the polarities remain. It was no different in the Orion Wars that lasted for eons, but where no breakthroughs by either side would ever be lasting. Every once in a while, usually within the worlds that had been submitted by the Orion and Draconian empires, there would be rebellions by groups that did no longer want to be submitted, but that did not want to join the Federation, either. Things only started changing when groups within the Federation got fed up with the war, too, and broke away from the Federation. Thus a third party of rebels or renegades emerged, and the balances of power changed forever. Neither the Federation, nor the Empire dared launch a large-scale attack upon the rebels, fearing that if they would do so, the rebels would team up with the others, and that joining of forces would create an unbeatable enemy. But even though a lot of people were sympathetic to some of ideas of the rebels about ending the war, the rebels didn't he succeed in making any major breakthroughs in negotiations with either the Federation or the Empires. It looked like a new stalemate was reached, only this time there were three parties involved, instead of two. Still, peace was not established everywhere, as not everybody was ready to accept these new teachings. There is, even today, some fighting going on in some parts of this galaxy, where parties are still submerged in dualistic thinking. Earth, unfortunately, is one of those places where the majority of the people are still living in the veils of illusion of duality. Yet overall in our galactic neighborhood, there is peace, and where there is no peace, there often is a truce. 